The Marlies had a disappointing season last year, not qualifying for the playoffs for the first time since 2011, but this year is different with some new faces and a lot of hope for the future of this team. First off though, before we get into the video, hello. If you don't know who I am already, my name is Nick Barden. I cover the Toronto Marlies for the Leafs Nation and this video or this series for this matter is going to be a weekly little thing on every Monday where I just give the news and notes of the Marlies throughout the week. I'm looking to bring quotes into this. I'm looking to bring in some interesting tidbits and stats from the Toronto Marlies and just updates on how the players are doing down there because I'm usually at every practice and every game. So if you do like this sort of content, you do like learning about the Maple Leafs prospects at the AHL level, leave a like. And if you are feeling really nice, subscribe as well, because this is going to be an ongoing series all season long, every single Monday. How this is going to all work though, is going to be like this. I'm gonna discuss all the things that have happened throughout the past week, like the Marlies winning, the Marlies losing, what happened during certain games. I'm gonna talk about some of the practice stuff that has been going on. And then I'm gonna finish the video off by answering some of your questions. Today's video is gonna be a little bit more loaded with questions because it is the first video of the series, but as the weeks go on, I'll be answering more questions. So if you do have any questions, make sure to submit them either in the comment section down below or just tweet at me on Twitter at Nick Barden. We're gonna start off with the two games the Marlies played last weekend, both on Friday and Saturday, one in Rochester and one back at home at Coca-Cola Coliseum against Rochester though. They split the two games. The Marlies lost the first one 4-2 and in an unfortunate game where they saw a lot of goals being scored on them from special teams. It was a difficult game from the Marlies essentially in this one. They allowed, I believe, three goals on the power play and one shorthanded, which isn't what you like to see. So they went into Saturday's game with a little bit of a pushback and they wanted to show that this wasn't the team that they had in this Friday game. And what do they do on Saturday? Well, as you can see, they win 3-1 against Rochester. Nick Robertson got a goal, Alex Steves got a goal, and I believe Adam Godet netted the empty netter to finish it all off. Some interesting notes throughout this game are as follows. Both Marshall Rafai and William Villeneuve got their first pro points in this game. It was a little bit of an interesting one as well because the Marlies came into it. They were a little flat-footed. They weren't playing their best hockey in the first period the second period was a little bit better and they're starting to go in the right direction the third period though was domination station i mean i don't think in the two years that i've covered this team have i ever seen the marlies dominate play as much as they did in the third period someone who did have a big game on saturday was sda he got two points he assisted on alex steves's goal he assisted on nick robertson's goal and he had a hell of a performance he was even on the ice in the third period when rochester pulled their goal he was in a unique situation he was in somewhere where he was being relied upon by greg moore and it was a great sign to see just how much he's progressed over the last year and how much he's going to be relied upon this season on the Marlies. With Eric Schalgren getting injured in the first game and having to leave and then resting the second game because he was going up to the Marlies, the second game was started by Keith Petruzzelli. And as you can see, he had a dominant performance making 25 saves on 26 shots. But as of right now though, Nick Robertson, Victor Mete and Wayne Simmons have been called up since Matt Murray was placed on LTIR as is Eric Schalgren, who is actually starting tonight against the Arizona Coyotes in the NHL, which is going to be very interesting interesting but back to the Marlies since they are all up with the Leafs now there's going to be some interesting things that happen throughout this week heading into their two games this weekend in terms of their practice on Monday though there wasn't really much going on in terms of lines or anything like that this was sort of a practice after a weekend of games where they just wanted to get everything back to normal and just get everyone moving and getting everyone just to practice and have that throughout the week and once they get closer to the weekend, you'll start to see lines created and lines that'll actually be playing in those games. It's not going to have Robertson. It's not going to have Victor Mete. So it's going to be interesting to see how Marley's head coach Greg Moore sorts these lines and puts whoever with who. Before I answer any questions though, I just wanted to give you guys one more update surrounding the Marlies. Mikhail Abramov, who's been out for a while with an injury, did skate on Monday at practice. He took in a full practice, but he was in a red non-contact jersey. He did skate in all the drills, but again, the red non-contact jersey 
limits things, but he, the good sign was that he was skating. One other interesting tidbit is Axel Rindell, who didn't start training camp with the Marlies. He was injured. He is now back at practice with a full jersey, a full regular jersey, and he was skating with the team on Monday. But speaking of the injuries though, I wanted to get a grip on who's coming back and when in terms of Abramov. Joseph Wool is still out with a shoulder injury. So this is what Greg Moore had to say when I asked him about the injuries and the timeline surrounding them. Yeah, today he was back with our group for the first time, non-contact. I can't say specifically a, a, a week or two, uh, but it's good to see that he's progressing and feeling better. Uh, Wall, uh, unsure right now uh, what the timeline is, but uh, it, it does seem like things are, are progressing in the right direction for him as well. All right, now to questions. I got five that I want to answer, so we're going to do that right now. Robert says, Gogolev question mark. Now this is an interesting situation now with Robertson up and Victor Mete along with Wayne Simmons. This sort of opens up the opportunity for Gogolev to get into a game possibly with Robertson in the lineup. It didn't really seem like there was that chance. He didn't skate with the team before their season opener in practice. So it didn't seem like he was going to get any playing time, but on Monday, he was a full term participant. And he was actually one of the last players to step off the ice. I believe he was the last one off the ice at practice. So there could be some interesting things that could happen. I assume he's going to get into a few games this week. I'm not sure if he's going to go back down to Newfoundland or if he's going to stay up with the Marlies. I assume that if he does have success at the AHL level with the Marlies, if he does play this weekend, it's pretty positive that he would stay up with the team. But again, I'm not too sure about that but it is a good sign that he is participating fully in practice because it looks like he might play. From Dylan Murphy, here's one for you. Do you think the Murray injury will lead to the Marlies recalling either of the goalies in the ECHL or will they be content with Ferguson and Petrozelli until Shelburne returns? This is an interesting question as well because Petrozelli did play most of last season with Newfoundland. He was going to get some runway here with Wool out and Shalgren being the starter. There was going to be a chance for Petrozelli to play, but now with Shalgren up, it seems like the leeway is for Petrozelli and him getting most of the games. I asked Greg more about that on Monday as well. He didn't really say much about a plan. He did say that there wasn't really a plan set in stone yet, but with the way he's playing, I assume that Petrozelli will get some games. But again, it's a back-to-backs too. So Petrozelli can't play in both. So Ferguson will likely play on either the front or the back half. I can't see the Marlies calling up any goalies from Newfoundland just because it really, from my point of view, seems like they're comfortable with both Petrozelli and Ferguson. Petrozelli had a hell of a game on Saturday and I wouldn't be surprised if they wanna see if he can continue that throughout the next few games. So I, again, I don't think there's any calling up of goalies from Newfoundland in the near future. Aiden Foley asks, in your opinion, who should be the captain slash assistant captains of the Marlies? This has been a question that's been on my mind since the Marlies began their season and even before that when Rich Clune retired. There are a lot of leaders in this team. I mean, you have Joey Anderson, you have Logan Shaw, who's in here now, I believe on a three-year AHL contract. You have Kyle Clifford in the mix. You have a lot of guys that could be captains of this team. Joseph Blandese is another. I don't really know how they're going to do this. I know Greg Moore said a few days ago that they're really going to be patient with this. Look at it in the next few weeks. He's not going to assume anything. He's not going to really put pressure on anything. He's just going to see if there's any certain player who takes control of the room. And I, I believe it'll be one of the guys that I mentioned, Blandizi, Anderson, Shaw, or Clifford. I could sh see Shaw being the captain of this team since he is on an AHL deal for the next few seasons. He's gonna be here for a while. Another player could be Joseph Blandizi. I think that he came on a PTO last year to join the Marlies. He's come in again, he's from Toronto. He's a very good AHL player, and he could be another possibility. He's a veteran, he's been in the NHL, he's played in the AHL, there's a lot of stuff there. And Kyle Clifford, I think, could be the other potential guy, although I do find it difficult because he is on an NHL contract and he could be called up to the Maple Leafs at some point. It's really hard to see him as captain, though he is a leader. He is has an incredible resume. He has a lot of things going for him. I just, the NHL contract to me sort of does not give me 
the sense that he could be the captain. Now, I could be wrong. I really could be because, again, Clifford has all of the accolades that you'd want in a captain. They had a skate today on Monday where they skated back and forth so many times. Clifford was at the front of the pack for most of that. So you can tell that he leads by example. You can tell that with the Stanley Cups he has, he knows what it takes to be a professional every single day. So that could be another guy again that could have the potential. But if there was me guessing, it would either be the three of them, Clifford, Logan Shaw, or Joseph Blandizi. And then obviously the assistant captains would be the one who's not the captain. So it could be Joey Anderson. It could be Joseph Blandizi. It could be Kyle Clifford. It could be Logan Shaw. Again, though, the three that I've mentioned just now probably are my sure bets that to be the Marley's captain. And maybe they don't have a captain. Maybe they just roll with assistant captains. And again, those would be the guys who would be the assistant captains if there wasn't a captain. Bottom line is there are a lot of leaders on this Marley's team. Four Dollar Bag Milk with a long question. He asks, who is currently the best D on the team, excluding Mete, and why is it Marshall Rafai? Will Dylan Ferguson get a permanent AHL deal now with Wool and Shalgren, both are unavailable to the Marley's? And what does Bobby McMahon need to do to make his NHL debut this season? Ooh, that was a lot. But first, I'm going to answer the first one, which was who is the best D on the Marlies as of right now? It's a good question. There are a lot of guys, a lot of guys who could be good. You have Philip Crawl, you have Mac Hallwell, Marshall Rafai that you named. You have William Villeneuve, you have Miko Kokinen, Axel Rindell. There are a lot of Marlies on this team who could be very good defensemen for this team this year. I'd say though, it's I don't know if it's Marshall or Fi. I, I'd like to see a lot more of him coming into the season. His stock is high though, according to Ryan Hardy, the GM of the Marlies. So that is a thing. He has been very good. He's been good in his first few games. He was good in development camp. He was good at the prospect tournament. There's a lot of good things about Marshall or Fi, and you should get excited about him because you remember his name, remember it, because when there's a time to come, when the Maple Leafs need to sign someone, there's a potential for a prospect, it could very well be Rafai. In terms of Ferguson though, I don't really think he'll get a contract. You look at Newfoundland's goalies, they already have a good few amount that they're comfortable with. Once Eric Schalgren comes back down, if that is the case in the next few weeks, when Murray comes back, then eventually Joseph Wool will be there and they'll they'll have a good goalie tandem. I mean, a lot of things will have to go wrong, in my opinion, to see Dylan Ferguson get a contract. He is on a PTO right now with the team, so I don't really know the extent of how that works, but I assume he can stay with the team for a while until Shalgren gets back, until Joseph Wall returns, until they both return. But I don't know if he gets an AHL deal. That's an interesting one, and we'll have to really wait and see in terms of that. And finally on McMahon, stay tuned for a story at theleafsnation.com on him in the next few days. Got to do a one-on-one -on -one with him, speak with him about everything from the summer, from his NHL contract and what he's looking to do this season, and how nice it is to be one step closer to his dream. So stay tuned for that. But in terms of what he needs to do to get to the NHL, I think he just needs to stay consistent and does what he does best, which is skating fast. He's a very strong skater, very good at beating players to the outside and cutting back in for a scoring chance. He's a very good two-way player as well. And I think if he just uses all of that to his advantage and continues to be the player that he was last year and hopefully getting better and better and better this season, I think there's all roads leading to an opportunity with the Maple Leafs. If there is an injury, so I'll say that, there has to be an injury for him to get up in the NHL. And if there isn't, I think Nick Robertson stays there for the remaining few weeks, months. Don't get me wrong though, it would be amazing to see Bobby McMahon in the NHL, especially since I've covered him since the beginning of last year. It's It would be great to see him there. It just is going to be very tough with the amount of players the Maple Leafs have right now. And lastly, from Kyle Cushman, where do you see Mikhail Abramov slotting in when he eventually returns? You guys are full of good questions. Now, this one in particular, I'm not really too sure about. I, I believe he's going to be returning in the next few weeks. That's just my assumption. That isn't anything I've been told. But I'd say he would be slotted in in the fourth 
Wine roll. As you can see, my confidence in where I think he's going is very strong. I'm not sure. This Marley's team is very deep. There are a lot of guys that can play center. I think about it right now. Logan Shaw, Nick Abruzzese, SDA, Joseph Blandese is another. There are a lot of guys who could play center on this team. And maybe Abramov doesn't start at center. Maybe he starts off on the wing. That could be the case too. At this point though, it's really hard to predict where he's going to end up just because it's still really far away for one and two. This team is just already so deep and it's it's really difficult to figure out where he would end up because you'd think he, he is good. He is very good, especially in the back half of last season. He really turned up his play with the Marlies. But as of right now, you look at the lines and it's just so difficult. It'll be difficult for Abramov to get into a center position. Maybe he starts off on the wing, like I said. Maybe there's the possibility he starts third or fourth line center is what I predict. I don't know, man. There's a lot of players on the Marlies. There's a lot. This team is very deep this year in the forward position. So it's going to be interesting to see. I'm interested to see as well where Abramov ends up when he's fully healthy. But all right, that's all the questions I have for today's video. If you do enjoy this sort of thing and you wanna see more Marley stuff, other than just the weekly update video that'll come out on Mondays. Let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know how you'd like to see me cover the Marlies from a YouTube standpoint as well this season, because there's a few things I can do and I'm just curious to see what you guys think. So again, put it all in the comment section down below. If you do enjoy this content, again, make sure to leave a like. If you really enjoy it and you really value it every single week, subscribe, hit the subscription button because that helps a lot. And yeah, we'll see you next Monday for a Marley's video. Maybe we get a Leafs video in the next few days. We'll see what happens. But thank you so much for all the support. Thank you so much for all the kind words surrounding the Marley's and me being back with them. It's going to be a fun season, especially with how good they can be this year. So it'll be a fun season to cover. It'll be a fun season to get these videos out every single Monday. So stay tuned next Monday for another Marley's Monday. But that is it for this one. Again, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you in the next video.